How do you know when to stop testing? It's a classic interview question which is both fascinating and a bit of a brain teaser. I absolutely love discussing about this topic because, let me tell you, I have given and heard all sorts of answers in interviews. For instance, some say I will continue testing until I have completed the acceptance criteria. Others, I will continue until I find all the bugs. And there are those who confidently state that testing is a never ending process, so we can never truly stop testing. So what do you think is the right answer? Well, truth be told, there is no one size fits all answer. Every company has its own way of doing things and they follow different processes to stop testing. Yeah, I know this is not something that you can say to the interviewer. That's why over the years I have been practicing my answer and today I'm sharing my secret sauce with you. But before we dive into that, let me introduce myself. My name is Jagjeet. Welcome to our channel where we help you succeed in software quality. I will be working with Dilpreet to deliver amazing content to you. So hit that like button and subscribe to our channel. And let's get this show on the road. Now let's think for a second. To know when to stop testing, we need to understand our exit criteria, right? So what exactly is this exit criteria? Well, it's a set of guidelines that we establish during the test planning phase. It is to determine when a testing is complete. Get it? Sounds a bit textbookish, right? Let me break it down for you. Think of exit criteria as a unique blueprint for each project, which is obviously created by the QA team as a whole. It can consist of one or more of these components, depending on the project you're working on. For instance, we might stop testing when we have 100% of the requirement coverage or when we have caught all the critical bugs. Similarly, some project might halt testing when they have achieved 90 to 95 percent of test coverage. There could also be external factors like project deadline or budget constraints that dictate when we need to wrap up testing. The point I'm trying to make is all these reasons to stop are valid and there is no one size fits all answer just like I've told you before. What matters is deciding on the exit criteria. Regardless of whatever that criteria that you follow, as long as you decide on that upfront, that is what that matters and that is when we stop testing. It's as simple as that. Alright, now that we are all experts on exit criteria, let's talk about the art of answering this question. When I'm asked this question in an interview, for instance, Jack, how do you know when to stop testing? This is how I like to answer it. Testing is a never ending process, but we can establish some ground rules to know when to stop testing. For instance, I like to create an exit criteria in the test planning phase, which is shared with everyone on the team for transparency. Now what goes inside it, that depends on the company that I'm working with. As each one has its own process, it would depend on to stop testing depending on the policies that I'm following in the company. But hold on, that's not everything. I always like to wrap up my answers by relating it to the real life examples. This is extremely important because this indicates that you just don't know the textbook answers. This is something that you have been doing day in and day out in your work and kind of explains your strategy of how do you implement all these processes and definitions into your work life. For instance, in my current company, we stop testing when we meet the requirement coverage and either have no known bugs or only low priority bugs that aren't showstoppers. This showcase that I've got the knowledge, the practical experience, and the adaptability to roll with different scenarios. But if you look closely into my answers, you'll notice that I haven't gone into the nitty gritty of what exit criteria is, who's involved in creating it, and what are these showstopper bugs. That's done intentionally to create baits for follow-up question. More often than not, interviewers pick up on these and ask follow-up questions. By not giving everything at once, I am creating these list of questions for the interviewers to ask. This strategy is called taking control of the interview. By leaving subtle hints, I'm guiding the interviewer to the next question and steering the conversation. Let's not forget, interview usually lasts for an hour or so. And the more bait that the interviewer takes, the better our chances of cracking that interview. Now, before we wrap up, if you found this video helpful, please do me a favor and hit that like button and share it with your friends. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more insights. And I would love to hear your experiences or tips on how you tackle this question. So drop them in the comments below.